This is your life of those wartime spitfires over Trafalgar Square 40 years ago. We're saluting VE Day. Today, at this very moment, in fact, a man who made spitfire history, a man unique among heroes, top allied fighter pilot of the war is back at Trafalgar Square, this time on the ground for an anniversary photograph. And let's just see if one of our rooftop cameras can spot him now, because we've got to find him pretty quickly. He should be over there. I think I see him. People all around unaware at uh, heroes passing by, and he unaware of the wonderful surprise I have in store for him. Let's get over there quickly as close as we can now. Hey, Johnny. Johnny. Hi. We'd like to celebrate V-Day by saying, Air Vice Marshal Johnny Johnson, Spitfire Ace, tonight this is your life. On again. <laughs> On again. Not really. We've got some marvellous surprises for you. <laughs> All right. John, John. I wanted to know just now if he'd used a certain word when I met him there now, and he was relieved to find that he hadn't used it. <laughs> well, straight away, Johnny, let me say my thanks to someone very close to you who's been keeping our secret, the lady to whom you dedicate your book, The Story of Air Fighting, widow of an RAF pilot. She shared your life for the past 10 years, Janet Partridge. <laughs> He's told me some of the whoppers you've been telling him. And Janet, where did Johnny think you were tonight? Uh, he thought I was going up to Knightsbridge to spend his money with my daughter <laughs> and then pick him up to the RF club to take him home. <laughs> well, Air Vice Marshal J.E. Johnny Johnson, CB, CBE, DSO and two bars, DFC and bar, this is your life. And those decorations for gallantry were won by risking your life on the spitfires of the RAF were in deadly combat with the Messerschmitt 109s of the Luftwaffe. And although it was a life or death game of hide and seek in the sky, the air aces kept score. For most of the war, Battle of Britain aced the late Salem Milan held the record with a score of 32. Your chance to overtake came in 1944 when you led the first Spitfire wing into Normandy following the D-Day invasion forces. Now, in battles largely over enemy-occupied Europe in four years, you too had brought down 32. You were flying on a sortie over Normandy with your squadron on the last day of June. Then we got a radio message. Spitfire is having a rough time six miles away. Could we lend a hand? With you that day over Normandy, an American who joined the RAF and flew with you for two years from Florida tonight to your old pal, squadron leader Danny Brown. <laughs> Daddy, what was Johnny's reaction that day when the squadron was asked to lend a hand? Well, like always, Johnny is one of the more professional operators, we'll call him that. Uh, the, Careful, we immediately, <laughs> immediately turned on course, maximum boost, a little dive for speed. He sent me up top for cover, and we got right square into the middle. And, of course, Johnny picked out one, moved right in, and then he just laid a whole barrage right across the top of the... Uh, aircraft, and of course it was very obvious the plane was very heavily damaged. 
And uh, Johnny followed it right along. It went right down in the cloud. Uh, we lost it at that point, uh, but Johnny took it right on through, even though he had lost his instruments, and followed it right on down. Uh, that put Johnny at a score of 33, and I'm very pleased to tell you that I was among the first to congratulate him. <laughs> He's a wonderful guy. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Johnny Brown. Now, Johnny Brown mentioned earlier your keenness for what you've termed a joust with a particular German fighter ace, which became in the press back home and in Germany a personal challenge. Now, by the time he read it, that German pilot had been shot down and very badly wounded. After the war, he wrote to you regretting he'd been unable to accept the challenge, and you wrote back inviting him to dinner. In the aftermath of war, that meeting was destined not to take place. Until now. He's here, that same German air ace, former Major Walter Mattoni. <laughs> Oh, it's better to meet us here than to shoot one another <laughs> <laughs> from the sky. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you, Walter. <laughs> one more memory, Johnny, in our V Day tribute to you. The song you played before flying into battle. Here tonight, brother of the legendary Glenn, the Herb Miller Orchestra, the self same song which stirred the imagination of friend and foe alike, and the self-same singer, Anne Shelton. Underneath the lamplight by the barricades, darling, I remember the way you used to wait. It was there that you whispered tenderly that you loved me. My lily of the lamp light, my own lily Marlene. Air Vice Marshal Johnny Johnson, top scoring ace fighter pilot, this VE Day, this is your life. Orders came for sailors from 